the scale tool and fill it with color right now. And let's go through some functions with scale because this is important. I'll use the plot. Again, we went over maybe the scale, the size of the plane, plot plane. Um, and, and again, right now you can see the stroke is still going straight. <coughs> um, right now, look at the, let's zoom in on the end and see how it's a straight, it's a straight line. And so that's the stroke. And you could, with the button here, the balance tap, you can change that into a rounded end. Also, if you have, um, if you have a point and you put it to angle straight and you want the corner to be rounded, you click on this and it, you just notice the corner rounded. If you're pointy, you flip this, it rounds that corner. Now let me show you something. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to hit copy or command C and then hit command V to paste. <coughs> Now we have the, the same the same shape here, <coughs> and I'm going to round this one off here. Now let's do this. I'm going to round the outside edge as well. And he here you can kind of see if you have pointed corner, rounded corner, straight end, rounded end. A um, lot of things you can do here. You can also um, show your straight line segment. If you do a straight line, hold shift, this will give me a straight line. And let's move this down to scale point. Hit scale, dash one, and click on this. And this will give you a dash. So right now it's 12 points of a dash. So from here to here, it's 12 points. And it's also 12 points by default in between each of these dots. So let's move this down to three points. And the gap between them Let's change that to one point. So notice how close together they are. Let's change the scale down to two points and let's round the ends. Now notice when we rounded the ends, it, it adds space. So we need to separate the gap a little bit more. So let's do four points of a gap. So here you can do like stitching, things like that, but um, it's, it's nice because you have a little bit of control over this. So let's do another line. Oh, why did it do that? It just applied the same thing. Well, it, it's using the previous function that we did. If you apply another line and another line, it's going to apply the same dashed line as you go. So say you don't want these dashed lines. Let's select them and just turn off that they, they go back to straight line with with the end. Okay, now right now, sometimes see how this is down the center line sometimes you, you're trying to click you're trying to click the line the object how come you can't click on it well because the object is down the center so you actually have to click watch watch the little black box that appears when I scroll over that center point of that line now I can highlight it and I can move it around but if I'm grabbing over here it's not going to let me grab it and again, this is a line. So if I grab this point with my selection tool, and again, I click the command le uh, letter A to activate this white arrow, I can move this over and it moves the line. Now say I want to change this and have a stroke and a fill. Say I want to fill this with a, a red color. Well, this object selected, the little object will expand. There's another way to do it because this is a, a path. You can outline this stroke and it'll outline the stroke for you. So now this becomes an object. It's no longer a line. It's an object. So I can't click this point and move it around. But what I can do is I can fill over here. We can fill it red. And we can apply a stroke of, let's say, um, let's do a, a blue stroke, a blue stroke, and it can change the stroke to whatever it wants to. There we go. So again, now we have a stroke with a fill. Okay. So that's your um, your stroke. Another function, say you want to indicate a 
one thing you want to add at Arrowhead. What I can do is select this line, and now here you can add arrowheads. And what's nice is you have a lot of different arrowheads to choose from. You can do a square, and you can set them all in, cut cards, fingers, things like that. So I like this from arrow number nine. And wow, that's a big, that's a big arrowhead. So why is that so big? Well, the scale is 100%. Based on my size of paper, it's technically not that big, but say you want that to be a little bit smaller, you zoom in, select the arrow, and let's change the scale. Let's do it to uh, 30%, maybe 50%. There. Now what happens if I change the line weight from 2 to 1? Let me zoom in a little closer so you can see what happens and my scale is 50%, well everything changes to the same proportion. So this thickness and the arrowhead change at the same time. So I'm going to undo that so you can see and I'm going to redo and it's going to go back and forth so you kind of see what happens. So it keeps the 50% scaling. So if you want that not to change, you can do that 100% or you can just type in here 100. kept the arrowhead the same size, but it thinned out the, ta the, the stem of the arrow. So there you go, arrowhead. You can add a an arrow to the other side, and you can change the type of arrowhead. You can change that to 50%. So there's a lot of versatility with, with this. Okay, now what happens if you change the, if you change this, uh, this line to a bend? arrowhead points in that direction. Like that. So that's nice, you know, if you're trying to point and call something out with arrows, you can do that. <coughs> All right, so under profile, you can also, let's take this line that we just referenced and bent here. Now, under Profile, Uniform, there's different shapes here. And what are these things? Well, let's click this thing, see what happens. Well, you're going from a point to thicker and then back to a point. So you get some line weight, some pretty cool line weight. And if you drag this or you apply a curve 